So they fell off a waterfall. It happens. And Nick was knocked out because A. Waterfall. And also, he didn't know the waterfall falling procedure. So, hmm. Next thing Nick knew, he was in a wheat field. It was a bit odd, but oh my god, he didn't have his color. He just had a fun time running around and having lots of fun because he just didn't have his color on. Then he woke up not feeling great, he was surrounded by lots of bunnies. What had happened is that Judy had taken Nick to Bunnyboro, Judy's hometown, so he wouldn't be arrested when he gets taken to a hospital. So that was real nice of her, and Judy's little brothers and all the bunnies around had never seen a fox before, so they were asking lots of questions, where did he come from, why is he so big? Why is he orange? Why did he fall off a waterfall? Now, I'm going to guess that this is the scene where Nick realizes that not all prey are jerks, that at some point they were all kids that had a bunch of questions about predators and everything. It was just the way that those questions were answered that made prey hostile towards predators. Or something like that. So after that, Nick and Judy go eat with Judy's parents. And there's a little beef on the table because Judy's parents don't want her to go back to Zootopia because the city is kind of a mess right now. And Nick does kind of a silly, he stands up for Judy and says that although she may be stubborn sometimes, she does seem to have potential and we'll never find out how big that potential is if we don't let her go back to the city. So Judy's parents are like, oh, alright, I guess you're probably right. And Judy's like, oh, that's so sweet. So Judy takes Nick to her room to show him a bunch of police stuff and show him that technically speaking all the predators that went savage did not have their color on. But she also thinks that there might be some foul play on it, so to test her theory, she can do something. She reveals to Nick a key, a key that can actually take off predator's colors. And she is going to take off Nick's color. And Nick is like, oh, uh, thank you, but like, aren't you afraid that I might go savage and try and eat you? And Judy's like, I don't think that's gonna happen. And Nick is like, why? And then Judy says, I don't know, I trust you. So after that, maybe the next day, because I'm pretty sure it should be a long drive, they make their way to Zootopia. And Judy's little brothers, before they leave, they ask for an autograph from Nick, which is sweet. Meanwhile, Chief Bogo is a little worried, because last time Judy called, she was in an emergency in that tundra town. And now, she's gone. So Chief Bogo might think that maybe the Jaguar, or maybe Nick hurt her. So he calls Swinton. Swinton is the Major, the pig that we saw last video. Her character would be replaced with Bellwether later on. So Swinson is still a bit preoccupied about Judy, so she sends the Sniffer Squad. Meanwhile, Nick and Judy have arrived to the Palm Hotel. Manchas told them that the wolf was probably staying at the penthouse, so they used their small size to an advantage and eventually get to the penthouse. And once in the penthouse, they find exactly what they were looking for. Um, I like to imagine how it all played out. It probably went like... Ha! I found what we're looking for! Wait, what is that? These are night howlers. It makes animals go insane. So prove you're innocent. Wait, these are night howlers? I thought that they would look like weed or catnip or... Okay, anyway, uh, the wolf shows up and Nick is like, What the crap, man? Why are you shooting at us? You know that that hurts you because you're a predator, right? Right? Well, actually, no. The wolf is a sheep in wolf's clothing. I know, it's clever. And the sheep also brought its friends, and they all wanted the night howlers. So then this big fight ensues, but then it ends very badly. It ends with tragedy, as Nick and Judy, holding onto the poison steel, fall to their deaths. Nah, I'm just kidding. They land in something soft and survive to tell the tale, and to prove that Nick is innocent. But they're not safe yet. The wolf is still after them. He probably saw that they survived the fall, so they run really far away as fast as they can to the car that they parked really far away. Now Nick is an innocent fox and all the charges have been dropped and the wolf, that is actually a sheep, got arrested. But this is a Disney movie, so there is a disagreement. The disagreement is as it follows. Do you remember in the first episode where Judy finds wild times and doesn't tell anyone? Well, I lied about that. She did tell the chief and the chief raided wild times and that's why Nick got arrested in the first place. Also, I think Judy was only helping Nick for personal gain. Although she did change her mind midway trying to find the wolf, and now she did care for Nick, the damage was already done once Nick learned and he stormed out of the CPD furious, never wanting to see Judy again. But the breakup is still a speculation. What I just told you is something that seems possible. But maybe like in the final film, Judy gave a speech and she said something harmful. She maybe said that the color is really important and we need to keep it on and that's why Nick got mad. That's as possible as what I just told you. Remember the Oasis? Yeah, that thing's still coming up and Judy feels really bad about what she did to Nick, although she helped him and she still feels bad about it. So Judy talks to her best friend, Swinton, in the major, she's like, I still feel really bad about what I did to Nick. And then the major's like, oh, it's fine, you got away with it. I've gotten away with a lot worse, for like example, 
I was the one who hired Wooly, the wolf who turns out to be a sheep, to make panic on the streets so that I stay in power. Oh, shit. And then Swinton says that she's gonna make a law or she's gonna announce something on the Oasis. We don't know what that is. It can be that she's gonna exile predators, but it can also bring back public execution. <laughs> I don't know. So Judy just kind of like thinks for a second, how is that it all adds up? How is that the same day that the wolf attacks, the same day that they chose to raid wild times and that she was just an idiot? She just thinks, this shot's awesome, wait a minute. But you know what? Crying is not gonna solve anything. She's gonna fix her mistakes. She has to, but she needs someone else. Nick. She tracks Nick down because she's the police. She can do that. And she finds him under this sad lonely bridge. Judy goes to Nick and asks for his forgiveness. She admits that she did wrong stuff in the past and that she deserves this, but that if Nick doesn't want to be publicly executed, Nick has to forgive her and start thinking of a plan. Luckily, Nick forgives her and they start thinking of a plan. And I'm telling you real quickly, while Nick and Judy are fighting over forgiveness and stuff, something that was probably brought up was Nick's childhood and Nick's father, John Wilde. John Wilde had always dreamed of opening a suit store, but just like his son would, he was always rejected whenever he asked for a loan. One suit store for all the mammals. Well, me and my boy have a plan. We have a location and we have a dream. All we need is a loan to make it happen. It's not Zootopia, it's Wild and Sons Zootopia. Need a suit? Zootopia welcomes you. Yeah, it's really sad that they both got rejected out of their ideas, but what's sadder is that Nick, in a child tantrum, gets taken away by the police, and it's really sad to watch Nick's father do everything he can to stop the police officer, and because of that, they have to leave the city, which is also sad. But eventually, in another town, John Wilde finds a crappy building where he can set up his dream store with his son. Alright, so back to overthrowing the government. They have a plan. This plan is very hard to pull off, so they're gonna need backup. Who? Nick's friends from the very beginning of the movie. One of Nick's friends has a bunker, and Nick's friends has been hiding there since Wild Times was destroyed, and they're just hiding from all the chaos that's been happening. Down there, they come up with a plan. You see, because of Judy's job, she is required to wear a microphone that's recording everything. So she recorded Swinton and meeting to starting all of this. So if she can just play that at the oasis, then at the oasis showing everyone that Swinton has done all this, then it can maybe get arrested too, so she wouldn't get away with it. The day of the celebration comes, and the plan was as following. Nick and Judy were gonna sneak into the control room and play the message, so that way Swinton would be arrested and exposed. While taking a little detour through the back to avoid Swinton's guards, they stumbled into a basement. The basement had the 14 missing predators that Chief Buggo had kept a about. Wait, I'm not allowed to say that! There is also like this bracelet thingy, I don't know what it does, I'm gonna say that it deactivates the tame color. So, a lot of the shots that I'm about to show you look a lot cooler. Guards enter the room and try to arrest or kill Nick and Judy, and they fight for a little bit and then they make their escape to the final room, the control room. They enter the room, and Swinton is already waiting for them. Swinton has already this speech to back top, she's gonna make a law that predators have to be publicly executed or exiled or something like that. Swinton's guards enter the room, they begin a fight, Nick and Judy try to do their best, but they are no match for a bunch of guards. Um, and although they were trying their best, they lose the recording of Swinton admitting to everything. Without much hope, Nick and Judy jump off the stadium, holding on by a thread, literally, and land on the middle of the stadium. The public is outraged to see a bunny and a fox together. They think that the fox is gonna eat the bunny, and they start to hurl food at Nick to protect Judy from the dangerous predator, and Nick has had it, so he does a chat move. Nick still had the key that Judy gave him that allowed him to take off his collar. So he takes his collar in front of the audience and gives a speech that predators or prey, they're both animals, they are the same, this is ridiculous, we have to abolish the collar. Before the audience have a chance to react, Gazelle's dance tigers walk inside the room and Savage, they've been infected with Night Howlers. And Nick and Judy try to escape, but then Nick gets shot by the Night Howlers too and he begins to go crazy. And the stadium safety mechanisms lock them both inside, meaning that, well, shit is gonna die. Except, I am sorry for screaming, it's just that this part is way too awesome. You see, Nick doesn't have his color on, right? So there's nothing stopping him from going savage, so he's going to kill Judy. Wrong. You're wrong. 
Nick controls his impulses, so that instead of killing Judy with his savagery, he uses it to defend Judy from the savage tigers. Or he puts on the bracelet that deactivates his color so he can use the impulses to defend Judy. Each one is awesome. The audience is looking in awe. They're like, what the frick? That's not supposed to happen. What's going on? And I'm dead serious. If this movie actually came out on the theater, half of the audience would be crying out of excitement. And I mean that half. This scene's just way too bloody awesome. And I'm not English. Uh, anyway, the whole thing comes to a close and Judy gives a hug to Nick for being helpful and not letting her die. And the audience is like, oh, I guess he's right, not all predators are monsters. And here's the thing, the movie ends with the abolishment of the tame color, which is super awesome. But here's the thing, Nick owns a business that depends on predators being desperate to not wear their tame color. So, um... Either Nick reopens flat times for all the public and it's successful, or he becomes a cop. So happy ending to Nick and Judy anyway, and you're probably asking, are we ever gonna see this plot or any ideas of this plot anywhere else? Maybe! In the past, Byron Howard has said that he has an interest of using the ideas of the old plot in future Utopia projects, which are coming out. So it's not wrong to have a little bit of hope. But what is Utopia 2 most likely going to be about? So my guess is that they're most likely gonna find Obi Paros, so like reptiles or chickens that are not mammals, so there's gonna be a conflict in there. Or maybe my favorite guess is that there's gonna be a military coup and they're gonna make predators have to wear a collar and everything like that, and Judy's gonna be brainwashed. Have you guys read The Handmaid's Tale? It's something like that. I have a video where I survived an earthquake. That video is in the description and on the card that you just saw. Anyway, that's all for today. Goodbye.